Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you are doing great as usual. I am back with yet another video to help you become a badass developer. Today's topic is really interesting yet easily overlooked by many of us. But here I am to help you save some trouble. Taking these small steps can help you to become an efficient developer. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. PEP8 Style Coding Guidelines for Python Firstly, what is PEP8 and why should you care about it? PEP8 stands for Python Enhancement Proposal and 8 is the most popular proposal. PEP8 is official documentation and was proposed by the three great developers in 2001 and it has been continuously updated over the years. As Python is so easy to understand and yet can become very complex due to the flexibility it provides. This proposal aims to make a set of rules that will help everyone to easily write complex code in easy to read manner. In your coding journey, you must have come across such a code which solves a very complex problem but it is not easy to read and understand. On the other hand, a code that looks tidy and solves the same type of problem. You would always want to be the second type of person Although, this is an opportunity to clean up someone else's mess. So let's start with the imports part. In general, you could import at any line in your code. However, it is expected or it's a good practice to only have imports at top of the file. You could import from standard libraries, your files and third party libraries. Let's look at this example here. Take a look at this import you will not be able to clearly distinguish between your files third party or standard python library and it looks so messy i mean just look at this but pep8 recommends you to import the libraries as per the order in which first import shall be your standard library imports followed by related third party imports and then finally local application library specific imports you should put a blank line between each group of imports. It looks so neat. Standard libraries consist of the pre-built uh, modules that come with your Python such as OS system followed by related third party imports and then finally local application library specific import. So pandas and numpy is basically a third party library. And this is the one that I've created for this example, which is hello.py. So I'm just importing a function which simply displays the name of the person. So just by looking at this import, you can clearly distinguish that these are the system files, these are, these are the third party modules and these are the project related modules. So this makes your code, this massively increases your code readability. So this is exactly what we want. Add only one import in one line as here in this case. If you want to see a get diff later on, it's much easier to see that one that one line was added or removed. On the other hand, if you just update one line, then it would be very hard to see the difference later. It is generally recommended to use four spaces some people even use two spaces, but I feel it looks very crowded with just two spaces. So I use the standard four spaces. You can modify it as per your requirements. To update the spaces, you will have to open the VS code and open any Python file. Then in the status bar at the bottom, you will see the spaces, click on it and select the spaces accordingly. I'll just show you how it's done. So as you can see, I have, uh, I have one Python file opened. So if I want to change the indentation, then I'll click on, I'll come to this place and click on this. Once I click on it, I can choose it either indent using spaces or indent using tabs. So once that is done, the next option is to configure the number of spaces that I want. So here in this example, and the preferred way is to use four spaces and I'll stick to it. Let's look at couple of more examples for indentation. So look at this function. It is so, I mean, so easy to read. 
just by looking at this example you clearly know that there are four parameters this function only prints uh, the parameter but and this is the ideal way of writing the code as you can see this clearly distinguishes between the method implementation with the parameter as this extra indent is uh, making improving the readability of the method and here even in the function call itself as you can see i i am calling like you can add multiple uh, you can pass multiple parameters but the indentation should be same it should not happen like this is the indentation and it is not able to we are not able to clearly distinguish this is not a good practice to do here is the another example of uh, calling the function so if you want uh, the parameters on the next line itself so a clearly distinguishable indent should be present so which is not the recommended way of python you can do it but it is not the recommended way as as you can see here in this function the same thing we are doing but just by, but the implementation looks so messy here as you are not able to like you'll have to put in extra efforts to read the number of parameters present and how it's uh, written you might um, confuse it with the parameter itself so this is not the ideal way as the ideal way you should have a clearly distinguishable indent present on the parameters and uh, in the function calling as you can see here the two parameters are present upwards but the new number of uh, the new parameters are present on the new line but doesn't have the equal indentation present basically the vertical alignment is missing of the parameters so this is not the recommended way as you are not able to clearly distinguish the parameters in this example as you can see i have three variables the, those three variables basically contains a name and i am creating a list of names so as you can see just by looking at it it makes so easily readable and easily understandable by doing this by doing this indentation so this is an ideal way if you if you start writing your code in such manner then even the person who is reading the code should get inspired by the way you are writing your code yes the another advantage of having uh, your parameter on a separate line itself is just imagine if i want to give it a uh, type str is pretty st straightforward one but what if i have a very distinguishable big library and uh, if i want to give it a class name at the end then what will happen so it is so easily uh, writable like just imagine if you have, have this class itself you can easily add it you can define the type of this variable itself so that is why this is the ideal way of writing your function comments that contradict the code are worse than no comments always make a priority of keeping the comments up to date when the code changes comment should be complete sentences the first word should be capitalized we will be discussing three types of comments the first one is block comments generally apply to some code that follows them and is indented to the same line as that as that of code each line of block comments start with a hash and a single space let's look at the block comments so as mentioned uh, it should start with a hash followed by a space and the first first word should be capitalized so basically whatever the word is so i'm just starting with t h i s this is a block comment so this is just a simple plain block comment so you can add it as much as you want next on the list is inline comments inline comments are unnecessary and in fact distracting if they state the obvious don't do this but still i'll show you for the sake of the uh, demonstration so uh, inline comment is basically after your line of code so hash followed by a space and you can this is a inline comment and you should avoid it because it doesn't make any sense of adding it here the third type of comment is doc string and this is my personal favorite and and i use it all the time conventions for writing good document string aka doc string uh, write doc string for public modules functions classes and methods doc string are not necessary for non public methods 
but you should have a comment that describes what the method does. This comment should appear after the def line. Ding basically is this is triple string and then you can add the summary. This method greets the user and the type of this is string and the description is this contains the name of the user. Yes. So this is a uh, doc string. So how does this help me or anyone else? So basically whenever I'm calling this function, whenever I'll call this function and pass it as Adam. So if I hover over it, just by looking at this method, even though I don't know as it's in the same file, that's why I'm able to say it. But assume that if it's not present in this file, I'm importing it from the other file. And just by looking at, just by hovering over this method, I know that this is a method that greets the user and I am I know that this method is expecting name this contains the name of the user so this how this is how docstring helps and you should start using docstring as early as possible as this is the most OP feature of Python. So the next thing here is naming conventions. The naming conventions of python's library are a bit of a mess so we'll never get this completely consistent nevertheless here are the currently recommended naming standard at first you should use descriptive names as i said your code should be read like a book um, like an understandable book and for the naming conventions for variables for standard variables you just need to use the lower case and it is termed as snake case. You can use the upper case with underscore notation here to indicate that this is a constant value or sometimes it should it also used to indicate that it's a global variable. Following naming styles are commonly distinguished. So basically you can use a single uh, letter, capital letter, lower case, lower case with underscore, upper case, upper case with underscore, capitalized word, camel casing generally used in uh, uh, naming classes in Python, uh, underscore starting underscore single leading uh, underscore. This indicates that's it, uh, that it's a private variable uh, of that file and you shouldn't export it or you shouldn't import it into another file. A trailing uh, trailing underscore indicates that this word is a reserved a reserved Python word and that is why you are using it underscore so that you can use it for yourself as well. So as you can see here in this TK enter top level uh, the naming that they have you cannot use the class variable right as it is reserved for Python. Uh, so that is why trailing underscore is used so that you can clearly distinguish between the uh, Python keyword and your own personal keyword now that we know the naming convention to be used in python but another important aspect is the names to avoid basically we should never use l small l capital o capital i because uh, in most fonts these characters are indistinguishable from the numerals one and zero that is the reason with this we have come towards the end of our video Thank you so much guys for watching it. I hope you liked my work. Please consider subscribing to the channel as more such content is on the way.